Hello everybody, welcome to Proline's Deliciousness from the World of Art. The protagonist of this episode is Domenico Bianchi, born in Anani in 1955. When he is 12 years old, one day he is summoned to the headmaster's office for causing some trouble in class. There, the boy sees his drawing framed and hung on the wall. He immediately forgets his uneasy situation and experiences a eureka moment. I will become a painter. Domenico Bianchi does in Rhone's at Liceo Artistico, where he encounters the sculptor Nicola Carino, who suggests him to visit the venues of the avant-garde, among which are Galleria La Salita and Galleria Lattico, where he sees Cunelli's sensational exhibition in which 12 live horses are tethered to the size of the room. At the Fine Art Academy, where he attends the set design courses held by Totti Shaloya, Domenico Bianchi comes to know Giorgio Barberio Corsetti, founder of the theatre group called La Gaia Scienza, with whom he collaborates for some years. Yet, in 1977, he moves away from theatre towards painting. He is well aware that he has made a specific choice, the choice to become a painter, which requires total dedication. His research initially focuses on the use of earthy and dark brown colors, the end results of which assume a disadorn aspect, apparently looking like color masses that often tend to turn into the image of a cross or a circle positioned at the center of the composition. Over the course of years, Domenico Bianchi digs deep into the inner workings of some symbols, which later become, to some extent, his personal archetypes that will be taken as the starting points for his subsequent body of work. For example, he elaborates a line that recalls Leopardi's hedge in his poem L'Infinito, or he makes a twine which, seemingly casual, acquires an essential importance by force of repetition. This practice brings back to mind that of Duchamp, who, dropping a length of string to the crown, obtained from the random form caused by its chance of falling position a new and indispensable unit of measurement. This research that combines chance with compositional requirements feeds the artist creatively. He develops a range of variations by adopting different techniques and color palettes. The next stage is to transpose these initial traces to a transparent spherical surface. In his first experimental approach, he draws directly on a glass ball the kind used to keep goldfish in. By so doing, he understands that if a drawing can work well on a flat surface, it will continue to keep its equilibrium when transferred on to a sphere. Then, thanks to an acquaintance who works on the computer, Domenico Bianchi makes an important discovery that permits him to quickly elaborate the traces on a spherical surface. What's more, computers offer the possibility of moving the image to different degrees, either on the horizontal or the vertical or on all possible oblique axes. Therefore, the variations are limitless. At this point, Domenico Bianchi undertakes the task to transpose the traces obtained through computer support by adopting diverse techniques ranging from watercolor and xylographic papers to inlay work on wax and on marble to wood etchings. His favorite material soon becomes wax that offers us a transparent soft effect of great elegance. Moreover, wax fully covers the drawing he makes on board. Consequently, the traces take on a magical aspect. They are more or less transformed into mysterious symbols that can be unveiled only to the keen eye of a few art connoisseurs. Actually, these traces serve only to carve out his pictorial style in a refined elaboration of the initial theme that confers an irresistible fascination on his work and that opens the way for meditation. His compositional language echoes that of Giorgio Morandi, which always started with the same subject matter, a few bottles and some household items, to further explore their diverse potentialities. 
Likewise, Domenico Bianchi's works feature multiple variations on a few subjects. Though the artist is interested only in the pictorial aspect of his work, this fact doesn't prevent the viewer from associating the proposed images to diverse evocations. Images are never innocent. They possess the capacity to elicit possible comparisons. For this reason, his art can be connected to some themes of ancient philosophy, such as Parmenides' being, which is conceived as a closed, perfect sphere, or the one by Plotinus, which speaks of the origin of all that exists, within which everything finds its own justification. Or we can discover a symbol, the microcosm, which in a spiritualistic way contains the whole universe, the macrocosm. By all accounts, this is a plausible interpretation. Each and every painting evokes and impresses a world in which all the rules governing it are illustrated. Domenico Bianchi's art, therefore, needs to be observed carefully. We feel ourselves impressed with his work and we revere its fascination. After all, generating fascination remains of all time the primary mission of art. I stop here. Thank you for listening. Don't miss the next episode of Prolines, Deliciousness from the World of Art.